Okay, we're back. And, uh, you know, The Safety Dance is a good song. That's it. I just think it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you start thinking about safety and inspections, a lot of times it ha- doesn't necessarily have to do with the builder. I mean, things just happen. You know, Jay, I think, pointed out really well that, you know, it's not like, the you know, maybe the builder put ants or rats in there. Sometimes there are just forces of nature that screw up a house a little bit, and you got to be able to know what it is. Uh, or maybe know where it came from, came from, and maybe know how to even fix it. Uh, Jamie Sue joins us, president with Lakeville Homes and Remodeling, and uh, well, nice to see you, Jamie. Hi Ben, how are you? Good, good. Um, well, you know, this all you are here because of a fun uh, m- what meeting we all had at at Camels. Yes, yes. I was fortunate enough to run into you and Heather and uh, get invited onto your show. Vi- so thank you. Vice versa, we picked you up. You did not pick <laughs> us up. Um, Jamie, so, you know, you have a remodeling company, construction company, and, um, you know, it's, it, I think that when you start down, when, you, when you're doing a project, whether it's remodeling, building a home, it really does start with doing it right from the very, very beginning, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, the, the saying is it start, all starts at the foundation and it certainly does. Lakeville Homes is interesting because we come from a background of being mostly speculative builders and then about 2008 we saw what was happening with the with the economy and certainly the rest of the nation did us a service by letting us see what was coming and uh, really redirected our our marketing so that we could service not only the clientele we already had but also sustain our business with ongoing uh, remodeling projects um, it's we've we'd always done about probably 25 percent remodeling custom homes but we changed gears to be a hundred percent uh in order to sustain for the most part. So it was, we're saving our own necks. <laughs> but I mean, in some ways, yes, I guess it's kind of diversifying though, what mm-hmm. you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you weren't going to be a spec builder in the last three years. Correct. And, and you're uh, still here. It, we're still here. And we come to, we come to each project with a slightly different outlook because we've been that builder who's spent their own money. You know, it's, it's totally different for the teenage son who's never held, held a job in his life to keep on asking mom and dad for extra money so they can support their habits and hobbies, uh, to actually have to earn the money or to be dipping from your own wallet. We come with a perspective that I think is, makes us more conscientious to the end user. So let's talk about the beginning pieces of a remodel project. Sure. Like the very beginning, because... It, it starts just, with the wife. It's st- right? It does. Because <laughs> of the- <laughs> Why, Jamie? Well, when Ben, when was the last time you told your wife you didn't like the color of the tile in your bathroom? I have never told her that. I wouldn't guess you would. But it, I do hear about our tile or our, our granite or whatever in our kitchen consistently. From from a functionality standpoint? No, or? from if I could change one thing. Oh, you hear about it? I hear about okay, it. Okay, absolutely. No, I don't talk okay. about the tile in our... No. Because my husband cares about the kitchen. He cares that it works. Yeah. He cares that it's clean. Yeah. He, he cares that um, I'm happy with it. So, That's what he know, really cares yeah, about. So, so there, there is a concern from certainly um, any any family unit, but I would say that ninety five percent of our our projects start with the the female in the house saying it's time for a change, whether it's from a functional standpoint or it's from an aesthetic one. So, I wish I could tell you the remodeling projects pro, uh, remodeling process was a linear one, but it kind of bounces back and forth. Uh, you start with understanding what it is that is the problem whether it's purely an opinion or it is a reality where your sink is too far away from your, your refrigerator and it's just making a mess every time you go to cook. Uh, so, you know, ca- I call it capturing your dream. What is it that you are hoping to achieve? And then we go on to that next step, which is getting your ducks in a row. Well, what can you afford? You know, most of our clients, um, all of our clients, they have a budget of some sort. It may be a million dollars. It may be $50,000. It may be $5,000. But understanding what your budget your own budget is and what those limitations are certainly helps to uh, bring your team into honed in on your on your results that you want. And that that process can certainly take into consideration uh, where financing is coming. Well, let's let's from. talk about the, the that for a second, just the, the cost, because you had mentioned this as design build. And mm-hmm. if you start with the what you had said before the show, if you start with the design before you start looking at what it's going to cost to build it, you may end up with something that's way extravagantly more than you were hoping to pay. Sure. Uh, we, you know, we work with designers and architects all the time, and they provide a very valuable uh, service. purpose. Yeah, yeah service. Um, but at the same time, their job is not necessarily to 
keep costs on track or they're not getting the real-time market information that we do on a daily basis. They're not pricing out projects the way we are. They're not seeing that there's been an earthquake down in Chile and most of the um, – most of the base that goes in, into millwork is is coming out of Chile. Things along those lines that are uh, impacting costs. So with a design build process, that's when you're working with your designer as well as your builder at the same time. So it's kind of a hand in hand, provides a little bit of a check and balance so that uh, before you go ahead and turn your architect loose and say, all right, this is the design we want, let's get permits for it, you have an understanding of what those costs are going to be so you can determine order of magnitude whether or not it's the right project for you. So should people hire an architect? Absolutely. There's a time and place for it. Um, you know, we, Lakeville Homes, will often work with architects in conjunction. We'll bring them in to uh, for the right client and the right project and say, okay, let's work together, and this is the this is one team we propose to, to the homeowner. Another option is to uh, hire an architect first, which we've talked about, but it's we'll then at that point say, well, we'll come on as a, an additional service provider. We'll provide pre-construction information so that you have the benefits of that design build process, but you've gotten to use any designer or architect that you want to. So it sounds to me like getting started with a remodel project and, and really doing it right, it's, it's really a lot of consultation. It's a, it's a lot of communication back and forth rather than just, hey, here's what we want to do and here's the best way to do it. Correct. Correct. And, it, and I think you want to have that those open lines of communication. I mean, that should be a part of your process as far as hiring a contractor goes. You want to work with someone who you feel has a good understanding of what your vision is and how we're going to get there. So I like to think that it, we're a team and we're on the same side of the line. We're trying to get to the same results. Do you tend to think that most people do, do you end up being a team the whole way through or sometimes do the team start going the wrong direction? You know, there's, I would say there's no process that's perfect. You know, it's more often than not there's a hiccup. In fact, when it happens at the beginning of the project, I kind of say, well, it's good to get that, get that out of the way. But at the same time, it is all about uh, not just the recovery, but how we're, we're learning to work together. So there's, there's stumbling blocks. I mean, I can tell you I want a kitchen that's nice. What that means to me is different than you, 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 and you, everyone in the room. So it, it's really about being able to turn a picture in someone's head into a reality. Uh, we're here with Jamie Sue with Lakeville Homes. Jamie, we have about just a couple of minutes left before sure. we have to go to break. Um, I, I like where you come from, though, as far as, you know, that, that listening concept, because I, I, it's a matter of, okay, let's understand what you want and then presenting maybe some level of options. Sure, absolutely. And it's and I think that anyone who, any general contractor who comes to you and say this is the only way to do it, I think they're trying to lead you in a specific direction. It may be to their benefit. It, hopefully it's to your benefit also. But I believe that every client kind of has their own way they want to work. So it's a matter of feeling out what works best for them. Yeah. And, and hiring the contractor, that's an important part of the process too. I mean, there you could you, just kind of some fundamental starting points. Uh, check with your local home builders association. Uh, in King, King and Snohomish County, it's the Master Builders Association. That's kind of like the USDA of... Um, home builders. So, and, and honestly, there's no reason why anyone who's a qualified home builder wouldn't be a part of that uh, organization. It's, essentially, we get paid to be a part of it when it comes down to it. So there is no reason. Um, you know, going with references, you, certainly there's the online option as far as Yelp or things along those lines, but everyone comes from a different perspective. So, you know, uh, me asking a trusted friend who I should use is probably going to help hold a little bit more water than asking or finding out the opinion of a perfect stranger. Um, and what, then what are some of those biggest questions, the big, the most frequently asked questions that people ask them? You talk about your, you, know, mm -hmm. you find a friend or you go to Master Builder Association or whatever it may be. What are some of the key questions that people are, you know, that are people are asking? Uh, they're asking of their potential builders. One, are you licensed? Are you, are you bonded? I mean, what should they be asking? Yeah. yeah. Are you licensed? Are you bonded? Um, you know, are you recognized within the state? Are you active in the building industry? Are you up on current legislation? For instance, last year there was the EPA passed um, a lead paint resolution that impacts every house built before 1978. In fact, you can be subject to fines if you don't have the uh, contractor with the right licensing working on your home because basically it exposes the family members in that, in that house, especially those under six years old, to potentially high levels of toxicity, which can impair development. So, you know, the EPA is looking out for uh, the, ho the home occupants, but at the same time, it's through the method of regulation. So, you know, someone who's involved, someone who knows what's going on, they're going to know these things and not 
get you as a homeowner into trouble and also not going to get themselves into trouble because they're looking out for that. Okay. Well, um, Jamie, we do have to go to break, uh, but thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you. And, you know, on on your website at lakevillehomes.com, you actually have five steps to remodeling your home, which, uh, you know, they're, they're interesting, starting with um, capturing your daydream, get your ducks in a row, interviewing mm-hmm. contractors, as we talked about. And potentially hiring that architect and getting going. So uh, good information and there. that's a free PDF download. Free PDF download. Got to love those PDFs as long as you're not using Apple, right? <laughs> uh, you know, when we come back, everybody's actually coming back. And, you know, just as Jamie said, you got to interview people to work with. You got to interview a contractor. But how do you know if potential clients and potential contractors, potential real estate agents, mortgage brokers are going to be a good fit? We're all going to come back and discuss it after this break. <laughs> 